Hey, Mr. Hutch, thanks for joining me again. Today, we're going to do somewhat of an inquiry activity so that you can mess around with code blocks on Tinkercad within the iPad and just figure out how everything works and what all the different uh, code variables you can change and what they do and things like that. So go ahead and jump on the Tinkercad app on your iPad and we're going to click code blocks and then create a new code block. Once you're in here, it'll take a second to load. We are gonna go up to the top right and click new design. This is just gonna open up a brand new work plane. Uh, I'm gonna grab this little window here and drag it over so I can see a little bit more of our work plane. Now with your fingers, you can pinch to zoom out a little bit so you can see the work plane. The first thing that I want you to see is up here on the top left, this is gonna make sure that you are oriented right and that you're looking at the front. Um, you can also identify that by seeing the word work plane. Make sure that is uh, how you would expect to read it. Uh, you can manipulate things by moving that cube or you can just use your finger and move things around to look underneath, uh, directly on top and so forth. All right, now we're gonna go directly over to the shapes and start this little inquiry process. Now, you're gonna be sort of answering things on your own if you're doing it through video mode. Uh, if you're live in school, you get to really go through the inquiry process. So if you're a teacher watching this, uh, you can use this as a model but uh, or pause things as we go for students to answer questions. All right, here we go. The first thing I want you to do is pull out a box. So you're gonna drag the box out to this um, code space and we are going to uh, open what's called the drawer. Now, every time you pull out an object, uh, you do want to be pulling out this modify block of create new object. It just allows you in the future, if you wanted to duplicate work and things like that, you can use object zero uh, by just adding a copy of it. And so it's a good habit to get into uh, which is naming your objects that you're working with and manipulating. All right, so I want you to pull out a box. Now to view what's going on, you just go up here and hit the play button. So you can see it creates a box. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Uh, right away, what do you notice? Right, so it creates the object and puts the center origin at zero, zero, zero. So if we're gonna turn this into an actual printable image, we need to get the base all the way up onto the work plane. And so before we even manipulate the shape, we need to move it. So we're gonna bring out a move block. Now, I want you to be thinking about the height. Our height is 20. Now, the measurements in this uh, each little mini, mini square here is a millimeter. So you can see we have 10, 20 millimeters, um, or uh, that's just one, two centimeters. So to give you an idea of scale uh, and the units we're using, I want you to understand that. All right, now, if our height is 20 millimeters, and I just want to bring it up so it's flush with the work plane, uh, I just need to bring it up half that amount. So what would that be? If you said 10, you got it. Now to see it in action, me just tapping off doesn't do it, I just hit play real quick. Uh, and that is sort of like running the program like any other uh, coding that you would do. All right, now that I have uh, this cube on the work plane, uh, your next inquiry task is to literally just turn it into a sphere. Don't pull out a sphere. Do things with this code and with the different variables in the drawer, and I want you to turn the cube into a sphere. So just take a moment and go ahead and mess around with that until you pull off the task. All right, so we see that we can mess with edges. So if you change this to something uh, like 10, then you notice that it manipulated the edges, okay, and turned it into a sphere. So 
edges are going to smooth out the edges. Uh, but notice all the uh, sort of polygon type sides to that. The edge steps are going to really smooth that out. So if I want to really smooth that out, I can change that to 200 uh, and that'll be as smooth as it can go. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and we're going to trash this I this object and I'm just going to pull down just the blue part and drag it to the trash can. And I want you to pull out a cylinder this time. So I'm going to go back to shapes and pull out a cylinder. Let's attach it to our object there. And what I'd like you to do now is hit play so we can see our new shape. And again, right away, we're going to have to do what? Move it. Uh, see if you can figure out how high we need to move it up before I say it. I'm looking at the height of 20. All right. We're moving up the z-axis 10. And we'll hit play and see if we did it right. And there we go. All right. Now that we have it on the work plane where we want, I just want you to experience what happens when you change sides, edges, and edge steps. And see if you can start to determine what those do. So go ahead and mess with that and uh, draw some conclusions as to what those do. The sides, you can go anywhere from zero to 200 with this shape. Ah, look at that. Smooth like a baby's bottom. All right, now I'm gonna mess with my edges. This can go zero to 10. Ooh, what did that do? All right, now my edge steps. Let's go ahead and make that a 10 as well see if it does anything okay so it smoothed out that top face edge so now you can see how you can manipulate those to get different shapes that you want all right we're going to go ahead and trash the cylinder shape and let's go back to shapes and bring out a sphere open your drawer up and go ahead and hit play to clear the other shape and mess with the radius so right now it's at 10 i'm gonna make it 50 and just see what happens hit play whoa that is gigantic sphere <laughs> all right maybe 50 is too big for my window all right let's just go 20 and see what it looks like there there we go all right now remember that's a radius so we're not talking about the diameter so when i did i'm doing a radius of 20 um, i'm actually 40 millimeters across all right now let's try to see what steps are so steps right now are at 18 go ahead and mess with that okay, and figure out what that does ah look at that when i lower the steps let me go like two ah so you can see these steps are making more of a, a polygonal uh, shaping rather than a smooth uh, surface. So I'm going to go to 200 and see what that does. Yeah, look at that. So we have a nice smooth uh, surface when we increase the amount of steps in a sphere. All right, let's go ahead and trash that one and pull out a roof. Open your drawer. And look at this, this one only has L for length. Uh, so all we can do is get it raised up. Let's go ahead and modify and move it up. Uh, I don't know what the height is because it doesn't say. Uh, I mean, the length is 20. So see if you can get it up on the uh, work plane there. Go ahead and pause if you wanna mess with that real quick. Ah, oh, half of the length put it way too high. So I'm going to mess around and do some trial and error. There we go. All right. So I have it on the work plane at a, I raised it up on the Z axis, five millimeters. All right. Now, since there's no other variables in the drawer, 
uh, all I can adjust is the length. So if I change this to 25, you can see it doesn't really do too much. It just increases that length. So if I want to increase the height, the only thing I can manipulate is the scale of the object. So this is something uh, new is in the modify category, you can bring out scale. Now right now it's a one, uh, it's a scale of one, so it's not changing everything, but you can double or you can reduce it by half, things like that. So I'm going to change the Z axis and I'm going to double the height using the Z scale. And then I'm going to hit play. Let's see what happens. Ah, look at that. Now it did double the height, but look, we went under our work plane again. So you have after you scale, then maybe you want to move. So something to realize as you're using a shape like this is maybe do your scaling first, then move it where you want it at the end. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of our roof. I want you to get to toy around with that and see how it functions. And let's go to the cone. So pull out a cone shape. And what I want you to do with the cone is I want you to figure out how to turn it into a cylinder. So get it on there, open that drawer. Uh, right now we have a top radius of zero, bottom radius of 10. So turn it into a cylinder that is of course sitting on the work plane. So I'm gonna go into my modify area and grab my move block and get that up there. I do see the height is 20, so that should be easy to raise it half that amount and get it up there. All right, go ahead and figure out how to get that into a cylinder. So you can pause this if you're going video mode. Perfect. So if you realize that you just need to make the top radius the same as the bottom, then you're all set. Uh, right now, that top radius uh, was zero because we wanted it to be a point. If you want it to be bigger, then you make it bigger, it turns into a cylinder or any other shape that you need it to be. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and get rid of our cylinder and we're just gonna do two more shapes. Uh, to finish up this video. So this one is going to be, if you scroll down on the shape side, I want you to pull out this torus. Basically a donut. All right, open the drawer. Let's hit play to clear the shape. Uh, notice the radius is seven and a half. I'm gonna change my view here a little bit and zoom in. All right. Um, now make sure, notice I'm looking at the right side of it using the cube. I'm gonna get myself back on the front here. There we go. All right, now here's your challenge. I'm not gonna tell you anything yet. I just want you to get that donut to basically look like you took a marker and just made a nice fine line circle. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can manipulate it to make it just look like someone drew a blue circle uh, on the screen. All right, go ahead. All right, so we're gonna mess with uh, Let's see, not the radius. I'm gonna keep the radius the same size. That's just the size of the circle. Uh, but the tube is at 2.5. So I'm gonna shrink the tube down to one and see what that does. Can we go even lower? Can we go to zero? Let's see. Look at that, a super thin line. Now, if you're printing that, it might not be durable enough to do anything with it, but it's pretty neat to see. Now, the next question is what does sides do and steps. Notice how it has that uh, polygonal um, sides to it. So I'm going to adjust, let's increase the sides by a ton and do something like 200 sides and see what it looks like. Okay, and then let's change the steps too, also to 200 to try to smooth things out. All right, it's hard to visualize it, uh, but those should have uh, because we increased the amount of sides, smoothed out our circle a little bit. We might be able to see it more if I increase the size of the tube. So let me see. So it's probably, you can sort of still see some of the sides within it, uh, but adjusting those can smooth things out some. Ready, hit play. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one I want you to investigate is the star. So go ahead and pull out uh, the turquoise star there and open up your drawer. And I'm going to hit play again so we can view this. 
the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to put the inner radius. Right now it's 0.5. I want you to put the inner radius to 1, and let's hit play. Look at what that did. So our inner radius. So now we have to figure out what the heck is the inner radius? What did we just do? So I'm going to hit undo so I can see uh, that move there. Let me bring out the star again. I messed that up. All right, I can hit play. There we go. So look at the inside. So this is our inner radius, and it was at 0.5. Five. So it was reduced by half. By making it one, I pulled it out to the same distance as everything else. All right. So that's the star and how that functions. Uh, if you want to reduce the height of the star and things like that, you can mess around uh, with that type of thing. If you want a star that doesn't taper off, uh, you do have uh, this option as well uh, that has just more crisp uh, faces on it rather than them tapering down to a point. All right, that's it for your inquiry. Nice job today. We'll see you in the next lesson.